In this video, I'm going to be testing out the new iPad's USB-C connection and figuring out what can I plug into this thing. So in the last video, I unboxed this 2018 12.9-inch iPad Pro with its beautiful display. I've got it a little bit more set up now and configured to the way I want, and I wanted to test it in some kind of real-world working situations based on how I would use it, either giving this iPad to a client to use, an attorney to use during a trial, or how I might use it as I'm either working a trial or getting ready for a trial. And the main way I wanna test out those scenarios is by checking out this USB-C port in the bottom. Now, most of you might not know what USB-C ports are. Uh, it's a different kind of way of providing uh, power or connectivity to a device. When Apple changed all the ports on its MacBook and its MacBook Pros to USB-C, that's when all of a sudden an entire new ecosystem of adapters, uh, dongles, and other cables started getting created. And I'm gonna test out a whole bunch of them to see which ones are gonna work. Now the first one that I wanna test out is a USB-C to a lightning port cable. And so one end is USB-C, and that's the new kind of cable that's on the end of the iPad. And the other end is what you're probably more familiar with if you've used iPads before, and that's a lightning connector. Uh, that's the one right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the USB-C end, USB end to uh, the iPad, and then I'm gonna connect this to the phone. And once you do that, it starts charging. And so that's a nice thing uh, in case you're ever working and your battery is just starting to die, you can get more charge on your phone. The nice thing is then if you unlock your phone with your thumbprint, allow it, and now, now it sees all the different photos that are on my iPhone that are ready to import into the iPad in case I ever needed to do that. Now, there's multiple ways you can get photos from one iDevice to another. Let's say you can use AirDrop, for example, or you can just text stuff from one device to another. But this is a nice way, a feature that just makes sense that it's there in case you need it. However you wanna work, at least that's there. It might not be something you use all the time, uh, but what you probably will use a lot is a USB-C to lightning adapter to charge that iPhone. So that's something that is very useful and I'm very excited to see. So let's put that away. Now the next thing that I'm very excited to use is this, and that is Apple's USB-C adapter. Now when I, I mentioned earlier that uh, Apple had started making laptops with USB-C ports only, and so everyone needed to start getting these hubs. And on this particular hub, it's an HDMI version, and there's an HDMI version and a VGA version. The only difference is the video port that's in the middle. This one has HDMI. On each side, there is another USB-C port, so you can do pass-through charging. Uh, and on this side is a USB-A port or a traditional USB port. So the way that's useful is I'll take this USB-C adapter and plug it in. So let's say I'm in the courtroom, I'll plug this in and let's say I'll get my PowerPoint open and I'll attach the HDMI cable here. I can do that so that way I can connect to the projection screen. Then I can take this, my USB remote clicker. These tend to work with USB-A, these square ones that we're all kind of familiar with down here. This will plug in right into there. Then I could start my PowerPoint presentation turn on my clicker, and now I've got a clicker that can advance through my PowerPoint slides. And I think that's just absolutely amazing. Now I know that Apple makes, or not Apple doesn't make them, but I know third parties make Bluetooth uh, remote presenters that can connect to your iPad. I'm not a huge fan of using Bluetooth for two main reasons. Bluetooth is really good at power preservation, and so whenever something's not needed, or when the, the device thinks it's not needed, it puts the connection kind of to sleep and when it wants to resume it again, it might take a second. And so that's one thing that I don't like is the potential for delay. The second thing, and the more important thing is, is that this has a lot more range because it's 2.4 gigahertz. Think about back when we had phones that had like the thing that you pulled out and then you could walk around your house and even go into the backyard and you thought it was amazing because you're having a phone conversation in your backyard. Uh, that's the kind of range that these things get. So I've been in giant lecture halls, hot uh, hotel conference rooms, enormous uh, courtrooms, and the range on these is rock solid, much farther than Bluetooth, which is typically capped at about 30 feet. So this is, this is huge. This is huge, the fact that you're able to use all your existing remote clickers. I think that's just absolutely amazing, and I'm thrilled. That brings me, though, 
to a little bit of a downside. And the next thing that we'll, we'll talk about is this, SSDs, right? So this SSD that I have is 256 gigs, 250 gigs of solid state memory. These are essential whenever I go on a trial and there's six, seven, sometimes 10 deponents that, who, whose depositions were taken by video and I could get them all on the SSD and I'll need to put them onto my laptop. But what if I wanna put them onto an iPad and trial pad? Can I use this to get data on here quickly without having to spend a day waiting for those Wi-Fi downloads to happen? Let's see. Plug it in. Give it a second. And unfortunately, you get an error message that says contents not available. You can't read the connected storage media. Okay, that's a major bummer. So here's another thing that I tried to maybe hopefully get around this limitation because a lot of times I do have large files that need to get put onto an iPad and not just from a volume perspective like 50 gigs or 70 gigs or 100 gigs, that kind of thing, but just from like an eight gig file it takes a long time to download to an iPad. And so if I had a more direct way of doing it, I'd really like that. One thing that I thought might work is this. It is a USB-A, so it has a regular USB side and then it has a USB-C side, this new version on the other side. So it's got both ends on it. Really useful even if you don't have USB-C ports. If you work with someone who insists on having the latest and greatest MacBook in this litigation PC world, this is something that you need to have in order to make working with them happen. Let's try this, see if that works. Unfortunately, it doesn't work either. I would say probably the thing that I would want to work most with the USB-C port on the iPad Pro doesn't work. And that is a major disappointment. And just for reference, I've tried reformatting this drive as XFAT32 and NTFS, and it just doesn't work no matter what. So if there's a way that anyone else out there knows how to get this to work, I'd love to hear it because I would love to be able to just plug and play, like take a PowerPoint from my laptop and plug it right into uh, the iPad, I'd love to be able to do that. I don't know that there is a, a direct way of doing that. The next thing that I thought might be a workaround to be able to do it, um, it still doesn't work, but something else that I'll try is this. And this is a USB-C based uh, SD card reader. And so if you have video cameras, GoPros, audio recorders, anything that has an SD card in it, uh, you'll need a reader to be able to get the data off of there. And if you plug one of these into your iPad Pro, it'll take you right into the Photos app and that back to that import screen that we saw when we plugged in our iPhone. So that's nice and useful. I can select which photos I want to import. I'll hit the import button. It'll pull them off of the SD card, or in this case, a micro SD card. These are just two clips that I got from my uh, GoPro. And it'll ask me, do I want to delete them off the card or keep them? I will just keep them on the cards just for safekeeping for now. Now that they're on, my iPad, I can disconnect this adapter and now I can go into my photos app and take a look at these. Here's one, this is a 1080 and 120 FPS second clip, uh, 120 frames per second clip and so it started going into slow motion, works just fine. And let's go to another one. This one is a 4K clip and uh, seems to be working just fine too, just kind of the other side of the camera. What I'm looking at when you guys are looking at me, that's kind of what I see. All right, and that is a 4K clip. And that's important because one of the things that people got really excited about about this uh, USB-C adapter or USB-C port at the bottom of the iPad Pro is that they would then have the potential to connect to a monitor at a 4K resolution. Now, for most of you that are doing litigation support, hot seating, or other kinds of trial consulting, it doesn't really matter to you because most of the screens that you're gonna connect to are gonna be limited to 1080, if even that. And so not a huge deal for us, uh, but something to keep in mind uh, in terms of limitations, right? And so one of the things that I've been able to do is I've been able to test this out to see if it works. And the reason why it's important that this USB-C is because the lightning adapter or the lightning cable and port that were available on prior versions of the iPad couldn't export or connect to a 4K monitor. They just couldn't push that many pixels, but the extra horsepower and the port that has more kind of bandwidth to it can do it in theory. But here's one thing that's gonna happen. And let me grab a port here and let me grab an HDMI cable. 
I've connected my iPad via the USB-C adapter to an HDMI cable to a 4K monitor, and I'm opening up TrialPad. When I do that, if I come up to this uh, dot right here, I can see that I'm connected to an external monitor of 2560 by 1440. That's not 4K. That's 1440p. And then when I go and look at my options here, it only gives me up to 1920 by 1080 and I don't know if that is a limitation of this app in terms of it just doesn't have those options available and that's something that it needs to kind of turn on or just adjust in terms of something that it can uh, display. I don't think that it would have to be something like that, but it's not an option of a resolution that I can change. Now I can go into this demo case, look at this uh, exhibit, uh, hit the output button. Now I'm looking at it on my projection screen or on my 4K monitor and it just looks beautiful and everything's fine about it. Nothing's wrong with that. It seems to be working really well. Uh, but the lip, the problem is I, I'm not getting a 4K resolution on this screen, which again, from a trial consultant's perspective, it's not a huge deal, but I just don't know why I'm not able to get it. Maybe it's the cable that I'm using. That could be it. I'm gonna take a, another look at it, troubleshoot it a little bit more, just to make sure that this USB-C port is capable of outputting that kind of resolution. But that's the one thing that I thought was particularly weird uh, about some of my testing for today. But those are the main things that I wanted to test in terms of being able to check out uh, what some of the capabilities are in terms of being able to use the USB-C port on the new iPad Pro. The main takeaway for me is that I can finally use my USB, uh, my regular USB remote presenters. Uh, and that just makes using PowerPoint on the iPad Pro that much more feasible. Uh, it wasn't really something that I felt like I could do earlier uh, because the prior adapters, the lightning adapters only had lightning ports and HDMI or VGA ports on them. So there was no way to get a USB-A port onto an iPad Pro, at least that I was aware of. And so very happy to see this. Uh, is this feature to be able to, to use this alone worth upgrading? No, but in conjunction with the uh, much more powerful chip and the other capabilities in terms of what the screen looks like and just the lightness of this device, if you're uh, using an iPad that has the 30 pin connector, and yes, some of my clients still are, you absolutely need to be upgrading. If you have an iPad, even an iPad Pro, maybe you got it the first year it came out, you should be upgrading as well. That's my overall conclusion. Uh, in terms of other power and functionality, stay tuned. I'm gonna be doing some other tests in terms of how long it takes to get things onto the device, how fast the device really goes when it comes to using things like pulling up video clips, uh, playing video from TrialPad, other things that hot seaters and trial consultants are doing. So if you wanna see those videos, make sure you subscribe so that way you can see those in your YouTube feed once those videos hit. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I'd love to talk to you guys more about iPads or trial pad or anything hot seating uh, down there. Thanks so much for watching today's video and I'll see you in the next one.